Good evening. Thought I'd do a quick pop up here for about an hour or so. Uh, getting ready to start promoting the week. So I thought I'd go ahead and get an early jump on that. Uh, that's right. Glad you guys are here. Whoever is here, I'll know that in a minute. Uh, Let's see. Let me. Uh, let's see who's here. Hey, Anthony, how are you? How are you? Um, saw saw fro uh, a uh, 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 Ghostbusters, huh? Awesome. Hey, Joshua, how are you, sir? How are you? Hope everybody had a great weekend. I think everybody went to the movies that I know this weekend. Everybody went to the movies. Uh, we, oops, I'm gonna keep that one there. Man, I don't know. I just decided just to come up and shoot the shoot the shoot shoot the shit for an hour and then uh, and see where it goes. So uh, right now I am working on a review. I uh, got a, a new series coming up called Revisiting the Review, and uh, I started my I started reviewing I started re uh, reviewing movies way back when on my blog. Um, so I've been trying to think of something new to add on to the channel and I got an idea about going back there and revisiting the review. So that's what has been going on here. Uh, Hey Sue, how are you? How are you? Uh, yes. And I have, and I have started my 10th book. I have started my 10th book right here. This is what I'm reading right now. Uh, it should be pretty fast read, actually. It's uh, about 320 pages, but I should crank this out pretty damn quick. I always did read. Uh, I always did read Tom Clancy pretty fast. Um, yeah, I hope it's good. I, I, I guess the critics are the. The critics didn't like it too much, but the fans loved it, obviously. So there you go, right? I don't know what that means. But the fans seemed to love it. They did $45 million at the box office. So obviously, uh, people enjoyed it. And uh, it's going to make its money. Yeah, I read Tom Clancy books. Uh, well, I mean, I, I I'll go with you. This they they sort of fell off the rails. Uh, the Jack Ryan series sort of fell off the rails a little bit. Um, having him become president, just. I mean, I like I like his realism in a lot of his books. His his nonfiction books are really good. Um, but some of the other books he he wrote, I, I'm not. It's too uh, it's too jingleistic for me. I'm not really into that. But I do I do like his nonfiction books. Uh, he's very factual. He has a he not he has a ton of knowledge. Um, and um, yeah, but as far as uh, as far as his later books in his later years, yeah, I'm not. As, as far as his novels went, I really wasn't a fan of his. Uh, I wasn't a fan of Vince Flynn either. Not not a fan of his. I don't know how anybody can read those books. Those books are so freaking hard to read. They're they're unreadable. They're they're they just they're just Shrek. All right, we are up at at it. So the movie that we watched and we're, we're reviewing right now is a movie called In Temptation, Into Temptation. 
So I reviewed this years ago, and um, it's a really good book. I, I really enjoyed it. I mean, not a book, but a movie. I really enjoyed it. I mean, it's a, it was an interesting story. Oh my gosh. Let me see where that is at. I do believe it's 2009, but I want to double check on that. Uh, uh, hello, everybody that's come in. Come in. Uh, I want to say it was a great week last week here on the channel. Uh, you guys really rocked it pretty strong. Um, we had a sensational show with uh, Michael Cassie on Friday. Michael Cassie and and uh, Khalil Neal, they're here for um, uh, our watch party. We watched Hunter's Moon. That was a lot of fun. Uh, we also talked to uh, Debbie Burton, who is uh, Nina. Uh, I'm sorry, Nina Burton, who um, who created the, uh, the 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 recurrence uh, River Oaks uh, audio drama podcast that was a lot of fun and uh we're not done with those folks yet uh we are planning to have the cast of, of that drama uh, audio drama uh hopefully they will come in and hang out with us in may a lot of the cast for that show uh i really hope that we can make that happen i really enjoyed it quite a bit um you can find the the audio cast uh i put spotify down for as far as connections go you can go to spotify and hit the hit the link there and listen to it it's a lot of fun very very cool let's see let's see Two thousand nine. Wow, when did I get it? I thought it was two thousand ten, but it's two thousand nine. All right. Man, I keep on forgetting how to, I keep on forgetting to miss, I can't always misspell that. I guess it's because I write so fast. All right. All right. Well, let's see. Um, so what made uh, Ghostbusters so good? Why is it? Is it uh, was it all straight fun? Uh, was there any dramatics in it? I um, I know the I know Afterlife uh, was uh, Frozen Empire a little bit darker as well. Um, I would like to I like to know that. I know James is, I believe, if I'm not mistaken, I think James from the Friendly Men is on his way back home. He's in the middle of flying. So there will be no James on this co-hosting <laughs> on this one. Uh, that's right. Uh, you probably know us the title, Boneyard Ballas. Um, yeah, it's going to be a bag, a bag sale, a bag week sale tonight, this week at the library. So. Um, so far, so far, the first two bag sales uh, in January and February have actually been pretty good. Uh, I've gotten a lot of cool stuff from that, from the first two bag sales. 
Um, so I am hoping that runs through. I have a feeling that the lady in charge of our bookstore, I do have a feeling that she does put some stuff away to the side for bag sale. So I'm hoping that happens. Uh, hey, caveman, how are you? Glad you're here. Glad you're here. Yeah, I, I think that there's, I think that's what the, what the lady has been doing is she is holding on to some stuff, uh, some donations. Uh, and hopefully going to make a big, uh, uh, a big sale, a big uh, uh, bag sale for us, get us to spend a lot of money. And she knows that we will. So uh, I suspect that uh, I suspect that we should do well this week. But then again, it snowed too. Um, it snowed on Friday, and uh, it's been really cold since Thursday. Thursday was really cold, and it snowed on Friday. Uh, it's been trying to melt a little, you know, it's been trying to melt, uh, about 90% of it's already all gone and it's supposed to warm up again this week, but I'm not sure if it has warmed it up, if it's going to warm up enough for donations to, um, to be plentiful for this week. So I'm not sure if how that's going to work out for us. So, so who else saw uh, who else saw uh, Ghostbusters? I want to know if anybody saw, who who saw uh, who saw Late Night with the Devil. That's who I want to know if anybody saw that. It seemed like a lot of people got to see that early. Um, man, I'm gonna have to figure that out how to uh, get on uh, ISC's good side because uh, I would love to go see some of the stuff early myself. But um, everything I everything I read from it says that uh, Late Night with the Devil is uh, yet another outstanding ISC uh, Midnight uh, uh, film, so or ISC film. I don't know if ISC Midnight is still going to go on. Um, I mean, the last few movies that they have released, as far as horror movies go, have been underneath the ISC banner proper. So. I'm not sure if that means that uh, ISC Midnight is going to be shuttered down for a while, or if it's just going to start just, and uh, you know, if it's just going to start melting into ISC. I also know to a lot of these are being pushed as IS or a uh, shutter exclusives, and I really wish they wouldn't do that personally because Shutter has a, they don't have the best reputation. They sort of got they sort of got the Bloomhouse reputation. It's like hit and miss. Some are good and some are not. Uh, hey, Greg, how are you? How are you? Glad you're here. I just saw that you posted up a new, uh, some new work on your channel. I'm gonna, gonna go over and check a look at that. Um, hopefully, business is really well. Getting warm. People are wanting more and more cool, cool items. Uh, yeah, I'm just going to be on here for like a little bit. Hopefully everybody had fun this weekend, stayed warm. Um, those who can, Michigan got dumped on. We got a lot of snow, got a lot of cold. And, um, yeah, not, not the, not the most pleasant way. We had a good spring going on, but then all of a sudden this cold hits. And, uh, I think for our plants and whatnot, I think they get really confused. They're going like, well, wait a minute. Why is it so cold here? It's supposed to be warm. <laughs> um, I can hear the I can hear the robins uh, um, chirping in the in during the daytime, but after it started getting cold, all of a sudden you don't hear any birds anymore. You know, they're all like, oh shit, it's cold out here. So it's really cold. Uh, let's see, uh, where is it right now? So, oh, you made your first, all right, your first series of coins. Oh, how cool is that? Now, people will be, people will want those. People will want those. That's, that's really neat.
Yeah, I'll look forward to that. Uh, in fact, in fact, what I'll do even do do is I'll add that video, uh, Greg. I'll add that video to our interview, and so when people come and read the interview, they can check that out. Oh, I think it'll be a hit. People people want to see what you create. So what we'll do is we'll put a we'll put the link to that video in your interview page and. Um, yeah, and any and, if and uh, if you have a way for people to order them, which I'm sure will probably be on your video, uh, we'll, we'll highlight that as well. Uh, let people know that if they want to get coins, where to order them from. That'll be really neat. People people like those sort of things. That that's you know they love that art. It's sculpting is a uh, sculpting and and making coins and, and and creatures and you know all sorts of fun art. People are into that. Now, are you going to show people how you did, how you made the coins in your video, or that you're just going to show the finished product? Okay, I need to go to. Yeah, you ready for tomorrow or later on today? Yeah, we're talking to Sin from Sin's Corner uh, tonight uh, or on Tuesday for Eight Questions With. And she is a very well-known and very respected cinephile. Her channel was very popular. Prep that tomorrow. Let's see. Oh, that's that'll be good. That'll be fun. Okay. All right, so we got Sin up and running tomorrow. Uh, let me see if I can get her link. I definitely need her link and that to her. Give me one second, fellas and ladies. Let me go over here and do that. All right. Uh, All right. All right. That's what I'm looking for. Uh, just be bopping around. Uh, all right. Uh, 
All right. So I guess that uh, I guess that, uh, Walmart is hosting um, is hosting five dollar steel books from what I gathering. Uh, I guess there are some uh, steel books that are out there that are uh, very much in demand right now. Uh, so I don't know if anybody went out to find any of these or not, but. Um, I saw some people post today. I don't. I mean, that's a five dollar steel book. That's a, that's a good deal. Uh, and I guess uh, Big Lots also had a sale going on for twenty percent off of their films. And um, yeah, uh, my friend John from Platex Two X, he went out there and found a Argo box set Blu-ray edition that looked was tighter than hell. Hey Echo, how are you? I see it looked and they had they had no I think it was not all Walmarts. Yeah, it could be maybe the bigger stores then, right? The bigger Walmarts? The bigger the bigger volume stores, maybe. But they did have them. So I mean, I guess maybe if someone could, I mean, guess I guess in theory you could go to you could go to uh the website and order them for five bucks a piece. Hopefully they can get shipped to your store. Um, and of course, the other big news was that uh, it looks like they're going to be shutting down uh, anywhere between six hundred to a thousand uh, family dollars. Uh, they're going to be shutting those down. Uh, let's see, the WalMarts here tend not to have what others are finding at other WalMarts. Yeah, you know that's the same thing happened to us. We have two WalMarts close to us, two Echo. And whereas like one store didn't have anything, the other store did. Uh, yeah, we saw that. We saw, we noticed that. Uh, the Walmart that's closer to me tends not to have a lot of a lot of the things that the other store, which is about one store is about three miles from me, and the other store is about five miles from me, and they each have they each are different. They each have different. Uh, uh, like the one five miles away is bigger than mine. But I might zip over there this week. Uh, I might zip over there Tuesday to take a look at it. Tuesday or Friday, I might take a look um, to see what they have in terms of steel books. I have not seen a steel book come through the library in a long time. Um, yeah, I mean, I was getting one about, it seemed like I was getting one about one every about five to six weeks. Uh, but I have not scored one in a long time. I have, they just have not come through. Now, I'm not sure if that's because they haven't come through, and I'm not sure if they haven't, if that's because the lady who's running the bookstore now is not pulling them and trying to sell them herself. So I really can't tell you. Which would really suck if we found that out. Uh, in fact, in fact, I dare say I think I probably could find that out. Uh, let's see. Damon, you are killing me. You are killing me. I don't know how the. I've been trying. I've been trying to get an interview with this guy for the last six months, and I can't get. I can't get out of the batter's box. And they just posted. He just posted on his Instagram. He just posted a brand new interview that he did. And it's like, man, you're just killing me. I I can't get. <laughs> just, holy shit, that's hilarious. It's like, oh my gosh. Um, 
I have to see if my friend is is telling me that she um I'm gonna take a quick look at my friend uh who has who's uh been giving me heads up about this other person not selling on the up and up. So I wanna see if that's what's going on. And let me go ahead and check out her page. Okay, so yeah, so wow. So she sold her Stephen King books. Hmm. Sold the spirit books for uh, Will Eisner's The Spirit Archive co uh, comic graphic novel. She's selling for 150 bucks. Let's see. She sold Star Trek Generations. What else does she sell? Oh, she sold the grip. She sold the ER seasons one and two. Let's see, uh, wow. Okay, that's probably all from the bookstore. Okay. Mostly books. See, she's she's supposed to be selling. Um, she's supposed to be. We're, she's the one running the bookstore now, and she's supposed to let all the stuff that comes through donations. She's supposed to let the resellers have first crack at it. So, but she has a, a marketplace uh, page too. And we're looking to see, uh, you know. Which I don't care. I, I don't care if she sells this stuff. I just wanted to make sure that I get to look at it first before she does. That's the only thing I ask for. So, um, yeah. So she did mention one thing. She mentioned that she sold the Star Trek Next Generation. Yeah, that's because I that's because I made her sell it to me. She was asking ten dollars for it, but I got it for five. So yes. Man, but I don't think she's going to be able to sell that Will Eisner Spirit Archive for 150 bucks. I mean, it looks like it's all complete, but I can't see anybody spending that kind of money for it. So I don't see anything brand new either. So that's a good thing. All right. I see it. All right. Hmm. Oh, I just cracked 190,000 views on the channel. Thank you, guys. Wow, really? 190,000. Damn, that's a lot of people. Hmm. All right. Yeah, it's uh that's interesting. And I'm glad it happened. I mean, it's like uh, I don't know where they all come from, but I'm glad they're here. So, um but this week's going to be another good week for the channel. We got a, a lot of activities coming out here. We have four shows. We have four shows. We have three interviews, three eight questions with uh tuesday we're talking to sin from sin's corner uh she'll we'll, she'll here and i will be talking movies um and uh, see and wednesday we're talking to with actress uh carrie goodwin from uh from a lot of fun movies including the the real bravo franchise she'll be here on the 27th wednesday and then on the 8th we have the dynamic and lovely uh greta uh uh Kolkoff. Ah, I'm always saying that name wrong. I don't know what it is. Let me see. Me and names just don't get along anymore. Okay. 
Okay, let me make sure I said this right. Greta Volkova, Volkova. Okay, so she will be here on Thursday, and then next Sunday, a week from today, uh, we will be here back on the channel for uh, Mary Wilson. She'll be hosting the ISC. Uh, actually, I'll be hosting it, um, and uh, I'll be hosting it for this Sunday. And we'll be looking and talking about uh, consecration. And then next month, uh, we'll be back on on the channel. Uh, for Mary Wilson, and we'll be looking and talking about Rust Creek. So that'll be a, that's gonna be a lot of fun. Rust Creek is a really good movie, uh, as in as is Consecration. Um, that is a really good movie as well. Um, I've I've already reviewed the film for uh, Thirty One Days of Halloween, but we do deep dives on the ISC show. So we're going to deep dive this. And this is a movie, actually, that I got through a trade. I got I got a trade for this movie from Echo. Echo, if you're still here or not. But uh, this is the movie that we'll be talking about next Sunday here on the ISC Midnight Show. Um, so I got I traded uh, uh, Echo for that. Um, I feel like I got I feel like I got I feel like I, I got way over on that deal, even though he uh, even though he he was very excited to get the first two seasons of Red Dwarf. Uh, and yes, I am still keeping my eye out for more seasons of that. Uh, we do get a lot of European movies uh, at the bookstore. That, that I mentioned that. Uh, uh, we do get a lot of European uh, uh, Acorn media. And uh, so I keep, my, I keep my eye out for that. And, and if I get more, if I get definitely, if I get more uh, 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 Red Dwarf going straight to you, without a trade i'm just going to send it to you echo uh, that's yeah so um it was a good trade box though i thought we did pretty good for our trade boxes uh i thought i thought we i thought we did it all right that was fun that was a good trade um So I don't know uh, what else is going on. I think that's about it. We're still working on April. Um, we're going to have two new shows booked by tomorrow. Maybe E3. I'm going to be doing, I'm going to be bring, talking to our good friend Ant uh, from the Friendly Men. He says he's got a band for me to, to take a look at. And I also got a note into Damon from um, from Bipolar Records. And I told him that, we need a band from the label to come down and hang out with us during April. So hopefully that will happen. Um, and that'll be fun. That'll be fun. Uh, we enjoy having the music on the channel. Uh, it's a lot of, it's, it, it, it provides some variety to, to, you know, some spice of life to it. Um, so I'm glad about that. So hopefully we'll, hopefully we'll confirm some other, uh, some other bookings. Uh, by tomorrow night as well. I got a couple of uh, irons in the fire. Uh, hopefully we'll hear from them and uh, we'll try to go ahead and book them. Um, I will say if April 12th, we will be doing another watch party. We'll be doing another watch party on Friday the 12th at 9 p.m. Uh, we're going to be watching Rust 3, Rust 3, and we'll be joined by cast and crew of that movie, including uh, film director, screenwriter, Joe Lujan. Um, he's bringing the cast members, so I don't have no idea who's coming. I have no idea who's coming. I just know that uh, he's bringing some cast members. And um, I know that two of the people that were on in at Rust 3, which I did not know until I looked at the IMDb page, I did not know this, that he had cast two actors that we have already done uh, interviews with. Uh, in fact, they, in fact, we interviewed them together because they were a husband and wife team, um, and they end up getting cast and doing uh, Russ Three for Joe Lujan. So I'm hoping, I guess, hope that they're two of the cast members that will come out and hang out with us. That would be nice. Uh, Judy and Eric. Um, uh, um, that would be uh, that would be a lot of that would be really cool to see them again. Um, let's see. Um, uh, and then in May, I can tell you already in May, cause I got confirmation. I just got to get a date down for it. Um, uh, but we will be bringing back uh, a favorite of the channel. Uh, we'll be bringing back, uh, Michael, uh, Michael James Bernard, hopefully Rob Castilla and hopefully Dylan Yeager. 
hopefully there'll be uh, uh there'll be oh my god my names my names are not right oh man let me let me get that right see this is what this is what makes me drive this drives me nuts okay Rob Merritt. Ah, she, see, I don't know why I said Castillo. I don't know why. Uh, sorry about that, Rob. That's probably it. I'm probably going to lose the show right now because he said, you don't know my name. And he would be right. Um, but he, he uh, uh, Rob Merritt, I'm, I, I'm hoping that Rob Merritt and Dylan Yeager, and I knew who that was. See, I knew his name. Um, we're hoping that they'll join uh, Michael James Menard. Um, and come out and hang out with us and talk about uh, you should have killed me. Um, we'll we'll do a watch party for that. And after that, I don't know. I got I got some ideas, but we'll we'll take it as they go. Um, but I definitely uh, uh, the, the 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 watch along parties with the people for, who are involved with the film uh, seem to uh, seem to have struck a chord. So to me, to me, honestly. Uh, this is what this is probably one of the funnest things to do um, besides a straight out interview is to what do a watch party with the person who made the film right I mean I don't know what it is right I watch I watch a lot of people and they talk about a lot of movies and whatnot but me I always want to know what's going on behind the scenes hey holy sh wow what's going on dragon are you all right? Man, I have not seen you in months. Months. You and I were talking about doing a, a guest exchange, and then I just you just vanished. But I know I know I know people get busy in life or whatnot. I mean, wow. Welcome back. Have you been around? Have, have you been around? Yes. See, I knew I wasn't nuts. Um Hell yeah! Uh, you know what? You know what? I'm gonna tag you. I'm gonna I'm gonna uh, ping you on, on Instagram tomorrow, man. We're gonna set, we're gonna set you back up, man. Bring you back. You have a spot here. You have a you have a guest spot here on my channel. Anytime that you want. Anytime that you want. Two new full time jobs. A uh, move across town. Wow. Well. Uh, Eric says, uh, I'm interested in this uh, wonderful world of Hallmark idea you got you coming up. So, yeah, I can't wait for that either because we're bringing together four horror members from our community, right? These are people that love horror movies, okay? Myself, Katie, Katie from Popping the Popcorn, Lady Valerie, and none other than Eric right there, king of, king of bad shark movies. Uh, <laughs> we're all going to be doing Hallmark. We're going to be doing a monthly uh, 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 watch and dig of a Hallmark movie. And uh, and the thing about it is, so what people laugh about, people laugh about Hallmark movies, but they would be shocked to know how many big name horror stars have appeared on Hallmark movies. Like, like you're, you're laughing at us for watching them, but what do you say about the people who are making them, right? So, uh, yes, popular, yeah, yep. Yeah. Uh, so Eric is going to be joining us for this ride, by the way. Eric is going to come on over, and we will be watching, um, uh, we will be watching and discussing the uh, the lost Valentine with Jennifer Love Hewitt and Betty White. That's right. That's hard. That's hard. There's there's some hardcore horror uh, connections right there. Uh, hey, what's going on, Miami? Welcome, welcome. Uh, so we are going to be talking. Yes, I'm going to be talking to you tomorrow. We we get we got to make that happen. Uh, 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 yeah, that I I just knew you just I just know that some people drop off YouTube. Um, it happens. Life gets in the way. 
Uh, and so, I mean, it's just like one of those things where it's like, well, right now, Dragon's uh, busy. Um, you know, when he gets back, if he comes back, just slide on. Yes, come on over and and uh, we'll, we'll, you know, we'll definitely get you back up and running. I'll let people know that you're back in circulation because I do know that uh, you were asked about a lot. I saw that in various chats. Is, so um, I'm just glad you're back. I have not. Yeah, it's been six months. Um, and, uh, that, that'll be exciting. That will be very, that's very exciting news to hear. And, uh, and of course, uh, our first, our first Hallmark, our first Hallmark show will be April 14th, uh, 4 PM on, on my channel. And we will be watching and, and deep diving, uh, uh, the lost Valentine with Jennifer Love Hewitt and Betty White. Now, honestly, honestly. Does anybody can can anybody name some of the horror movies that those two have appeared in? Well, not Eric, because Eric already knows that. Can you name can you name at least a couple of horror movies that Betty White and Jennifer Love Hewitt have done? I'll wait. <laughs> see if anybody see if anybody, uh, uh, see if anybody, uh, uh, see if anybody uh, can jump on that. See, see, you guys are all running to IMDb right now. That's what you guys are all doing. You guys are all running to IMDb, and you're all you're scanning their names right now and saying, "Okay, they been they appeared in some horror movies, but what horror movies have they been in?" That's right. That's right. <laughs> uh, let's see. Uh, let's see. Uh, I still know what you did last summer for uh, for Jennifer Love Hewitt. Yes. Uh, Betty White, though, see, caught ya, caught ya. <laughs> uh, Eric probably knows if he's still here. Eric could probably drop down the answer. Um, and that's what the fun thing about it is. Uh, scary movie. Uh, thanks, Greg. Yeah, send me that. Uh, send me the information about uh, about people being able to order uh, the coins. Please send me that. Uh, uh, you send that to me. Uh, send it to me on Instagram. And I can fix that. I'll fix that and put that in your interview so people can buy cool shit from you. And I do mean that. You guys got to take a look at Greg Scorpion. Uh, as soon as I update his page, I'll be sending it back out on my community tab. Uh, he is a fine artist, and he makes some really killer uh, – killer. Uh, uh, he's, a, he's a metal sculptor, and he makes some really cool stuff. Very hardworking. Uh, Moon Over Miami, scary movie. You know, she probably, uh, I think that was Cloris Leachman. I think Cloris Leachman did a scary movie. But you're right that Cloris Leachman and um, Betty White did do a, a, did do a uh, series together. They did, they did do a TV series together. And that's the extra, extra bonus points right there, if you can guess which show they did together. But, yes, it's, it's sort of like a Kevin Bacon type of deal, right? The Six, six Degrees of Kevin Bacon. Like he put one name over and uh, let's see, Golden Girls. <laughs> you know, you know, uh, in, in all honesty, in all honest, okay. How about this? How about this? Now there's a connection. There's another connection. So Golden Girls starred B. Arthur. B. Arthur uh, 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 was also uh, was in a was in a series called Maud. Maud featured B. Arthur and Adrian Barbeau. Adrian Barbeau named some of her horror credits. Yeah, Betty Betty White worked. She worked. She was very popular. Very, very popular. Uh, how about this? Golden Girls. Let me go back even again. Golden Girls star, uh, not only did it star uh, 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 B. Arthur, who had Maude, who did have Adrian Barbeau, but Golden Girls also had Rue McCallaghan. Rue McCallaghan played a blind science teacher in Starship Troopers. She was the one that was teaching, he, she was the one teaching them, teaching the, the, uh, uh, the kids in the science class. So they're doing the, uh, the dissections. That was, uh, that was uh, Rue McCallaghan from Golden Girls. Horror Connection.
So there's a lot. I mean, there's a lot of uh, there's a lot of fun connections, uh, and how people can switch from a uh, hardcore doing hardcore horror to uh, doing dramas to doing um, doing comedies to doing Hallmark movies. <laughs> So um, it would be uh, Eric, myself, uh, Lady Valerie, and uh, uh, Katie from Popping the Popcorn. We will be doing um, our first IS, our first Hallmark uh, show on April 14th at 4 p.m. Yeah, Betty White was a uh, yeah, she was sensational. And she, she think it's a cool thing about Betty White was she was always. She was always, you know, she she did have a really sort of really wholesome image, but there was a spice behind that. You know, she was she was a little spicy. Um, you know, as far as her roles went. But she was married to her husband, uh, Alan Luden, who did a, a show called uh, I want to say it was called Password. And he hosted that show for many, many years with Betty White. Betty White was like one of the celebrity panelists. Uh, and then when he passed away, um, you know, she never remarried. Uh, as far as I know, she never even dated again after that. I mean, she was always she was always doing TV or movies, but I don't ever I don't ever recall her ever uh, dating again. Yes, Miami got it. It's Lake Placid. That's right. That's right. Very good. So so our Hallmark movie. The movie that that the the soft the soft movie, oh my God! You guys are watching a Hallmark movie. Two outstanding horror icons in this: Jennifer Love Hewitt, uh, uh, I know what you did last summer franchise, and also Betty uh, uh, Betty White and uh, Lake Placid. Um, Jennifer Love Hewitt also did uh, she also did a remake of The Devil and Daniel Webster, that was pretty good. Not the Jennifer Love Hewitt that we're all used to seeing. Let me tell you, um, very very different role for her for, for that. Oh yeah, Betty White was a, she was beautiful when she was younger. Definitely, she was very pretty. Uh, that was it. Uh. Uh, Brian, the, the Force of Nature, I think. Was that Force of Nature or or Two Weeks? I think that was called Two Weeks, right? She had like two weeks to marry somebody. She was, uh, uh, or else get deported. I, I wonder, I don't know if that movie came out before or after Blade Trinity. Because I know for a lot of people, the first time they ever saw Ryan Reynolds was Blade Trinity. Oh, the proposal. Okay. Yeah, she had to marry somebody or she was going to get uh, uh, deported, right? So she was getting deported back to Canada. Man, that, 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 you know what? I have to look for, I have never seen that one. I have never, I have never seen that film. I, I, I like to, I have to go look it up. I don't think he's doing his usual Ryan Reynolds stuff either. I think he's actually acting. That guy's one of the richest people in Hollywood too. Ryan Reynolds. Ryan Reynolds is one. Well, he's one rich son of a bitch. That's for sure. You've right, right, right. Yeah, right around this Canadian. Yep. <laughs> That's right. Now, now is anybody getting excited for uh is anybody getting excited for Deadpool and Wolverine? Um I gotta be honest with you, man. I'll be honest with you breaking this down, but I, I'm I, I just don't I truly don't understand how they're gonna how they're gonna use this movie to incorporate uh, uh, Deadpool into the MCU. I, I just don't think it can be done. I think the damage has already been done beforehand. I think he ruined it. Um, I mean, I just do. 
I mean, the only way I could see them actually trying to do anything like this, but it's so convoluted, and it's I don't think nobody would buy it worth a with you know worth a pound. And that is, he put Wolverine and Deadpool in the in the multiverse, and he lands on the on the true MCU one, and he thinks that they're all part of the MC, uh, part. Of, they think he thinks it's fake, but it's really reality. But I just don't. I just I just can't I just can't see how they're gonna make that work for him. I, I think the damage is way too done. I mean, people will look at him and they're gonna think Deadpool, and they're not gonna take him seriously with Wolverine. I mean, even if they meet the normal people of the you know, even if they meet the normal people in the MCU on the regular heroes, it's still not gonna work out because he looks like he's it's a it's a running gag, it's an inside joke. I just don't see it happening. I don't see it, I don't see it working at all. Uh, yeah, and the thing is, the one movie that they're rolling out is that one. That is that one, and and it's just like I I just don't see how they're gonna fit. I don't think I don't think that I think Sony did the damage, you know, the with the with the uh, uh the Deadpool movies. I think they did. I think it was um it's way too tongue in cheek. You can't. You just can't take it seriously. I just don't get. I don't see how they can do it. Um, yeah, I, I feel bad for Dakota Johnson. I tell you one thing, I feel bad for her, uh, for Madam Webb. That was not her fault at all. Um, you know, she, she was very adamant about the, how the movie that she agreed to do was not the movie that that would ended up being. She was adamant about that and she refused to do press for it. She did not do any press for uh, Madam Webb because she was so upset. And and I I can't blame her for being pissed off and about the fans that didn't that didn't even th consider that it's like they just blamed her for it and it's like it's not her fault you know it's it's not her fault that they, that that uh that that happened to her it's a it was a horrible idea to bring in that side character in because nobody knows who that is I'm a Spider Man fan and I I barely the only thing I could tell you about Madam Web was she was older than shit she was old she was an old lady. Uh, much like Agnes Harkness was when when she was uh, introduced in uh, uh, in you know in the Fantastic Four. Yeah, but you know what? It's not her fault though. It's not her fault. I I can't I can't I can't get on I can't get down on her for that. I felt bad for her. I totally did. That was not her fault. Uh, you know what's gonna die another death? Wait, wait, wait! You think that's the worst one yet? Just wait, just just wait till Craven gets here. <laughs> I I already got I already got the I already got the plot already uh, planned out in the backyard. You can just wheel that right back there and drop it into that graveyard too, because because they changed Craven up so much. And you got to put these people in movies with Spider Man in the movie. You have to do that. I truly don't understand that. What's Madam Web if she doesn't have any interaction with Spider Man? What's what's Craven? What's what's you know, it's like it's just you gotta have Spider Man in there some way, somehow. Uh it's about Sydney uh Sydney Sweeney. No. Though she did put out a new movie this weekend that I'm really interested in seeing. Uh, that immaculate that looks pretty that looks pretty damn good that's right up my that's right up my alley that's right up my alley definitely want to see that were they called uh sydney sweeney the new dakota johnson you think craven you think craven looks good oh lord you know what? If they had made him into the uh, into the villain that he was, I would go with that. But they're making him an anti-hero too, and it's like he, he was a he was a formidable opponent. He was. I mean, the costume. I mean, that's probably the only thing I would sit there and tell you first thing that I could understand them changing uh, because that costume was was that costume. It had its place back in the '60s, but now, yeah, he couldn't wear that today. But I still think you make him into a villain. 
Oh, Immaculate. Yes. Yes. I want to see Immaculate so much. So bad. I want to see that. Hey, Mayan, how are you? <laughs> yeah, Immaculate looks great. Uh, Late Night with the Devil looks great. I can't wait to see that either. I'm I'm hyped for that. Uh, and I'm really hoping that the library, within the next two or three weeks, they will actually burn off a copy of Don't Talk or, or Talk to Me so I can see that as well. <laughs> no, nobody, nobody asked for uh, no, nobody, no, nobody asked for a uh, Craven. Nobody, nobody asked for Craven. Nobody asked for Madam Web. Um, the only, the only superhero, the only super villains that I would have, I would the movie I would have actually, I would have been excited about and probably gone to see, gone to see, but I would have been really curious to see how they would have made it work. Um. I would have liked to have seen the Sinister Six. Now that would have been an interesting movie. You could have made, you could have did the Sinister Six and made them all to be powerhouses and make them into a formidable threat. But um, you know, but I think they're going to do that and call it Thunderbolt and her chump pain. Oh my god! Oh my god! Oh my god! Yes, if that if that is not the most singularly worst moment of any Marvel movie ever made, is Paul Giamatti as the Rhino. I was dying. I when I saw that, I was crying. I I I just couldn't get over it. What that's what they did. I was in tears. I'm going like that is the worst piece of shit I've ever seen. There's nothing going to be worse than that. All those, all those, all those simps that were crying about the the Marvels and Captain Marvel, dude. Did I would tell them you have not seen Amazing Spider-Man two then, because if you saw that, you that would you would shut your mouth, tuck your head, tuck your chin in, and go sit in the corner somewhere because that right there is the most singularly worst Marvel moment moment ever. I can't think of a worse one. I cannot think of a worse one. Oh, nobody talks about that either. Do you notice? Did you notice that? Nobody talks about the Rhino. No, in fact, nobody really talks about Spider Amazing Spider Man two at all. Anyway, I mean, you already had Jimmy Fox as uh, uh, uh as Electro, and, and I and I don't know what that was. I, I I truly don't know what that was. Uh, Electro was just a he was just out for himself. He always was. That's what made him such a great villain. He's like as soon as he got his powers, he's like. All right, I'm getting paid. <laughs> uh, let's put it this way. How bad was that singular moment of Rhino in, in, in Amazing Spider-Man 2? Easily, easily could have walked in there and, and you could have put that, you could, you could cut that scene out and seamlessly put it in Superman 4, not miss a beat. <laughs> That's how bad it was. Oh man, that was awful. I, I always think, you know, the only thing I thought about when I was watching, I was going like, "Well, thank God, at least Paul Giamatti got a paycheck out of this." That's the only thing I could think of. Oh. Uh, oh, the job. Uh, the Corman Fantastic Four or Josh Trank's Fantastic Four? I, I would I would say, I, man, I can't I can't really harsh on on Corman's Fantastic Four, even though it was really really bad. But I did re, I did watch the documentary of the making of that movie. Um, that was a sad that was sad that was that was really sad. Oh, you're talking about Trank's? Oh gosh, yes, Trank. Oh. You know, we were talking about that uh, on Friday. Uh, we were talking about this off camera uh, with uh, director Michael Cassie. And uh, we were talking about directors that had come out with a first strong movie. And then the second movie they did, they crashed and burned. You know, a lot of the times it was an independent director that came out and got a big hit. And, and then the studio see that. 
and they go like, well, let's put our tra- let's let's give this guy you know a hundred million dollars and see what he can do. And a lot of times these directors, like Josh Trank, you know, he went from Chronicle. Um, hey, Michael, how are you, sir? We were talking about you earlier. I mispronounce I mispronounced Rob's name. <laughs> I I was I didn't mean to be crass, sir, but I did mispronounce his name. Uh, but I got Dylan's name right. <laughs> uh, <laughs> oh my gosh! Look at it. it's a it's a reunion. What's going on, brother? I know Dragon's back after six months. You just popped in here. What's going on? Oh, I'm in trouble now. Oh shit! Don't 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 get G's pissed off. <sighs> it's all right. You, st- you just tell G's I still got a secret weapon behind me. Oh shit! Don't get G's pissed off. <laughs> uh, but I did get I did get Dylan I did get Dylan's name uh, right. So um, I commented that uh, you guys are going to be here on um, the watch party on May. Uh, we're going to do uh, you should have killed me, and we're going to invite uh, Michael James Menard, the screenwriter and director, and hopefully we can get Dylan Yeager, who played Ducky, and hopefully we'll get uh, Rob Merritt. Who played Jeeves? Hopefully, they'll come on to the uh, and and anybody else that, that Michael wants to bring with them and um, and, and and come on out and hang out with us in in, in May and we're gonna do a watch along party uh, for you should have killed me. Nice. I think I just saw that too. I just saw that song too. That was her, that was his video. Nice. I saw I saw that on uh, I saw that on Instagram, uh, Michael. Uh, Consecration is this Sunday, this Sunday at eight o'clock here on my channel, um, with one of my utmost two of my very favorite actors, Danny Houston and uh, Jenna Malone. So we will be talking Consecration uh, this Sunday. That is a banger of a movie. I'm telling you now, that is a really good movie. Love that. That made my top 20 last year rather easily. Um, it's a great movie. Yeah, that's going to be fun. That's going to be a, that's a really good movie. And next month, I can already tell you the next month that we're going to be doing is going to be Russ Creek. Uh, Russ Creek will be our next ISC movie in May. Um, or April in April. Uh, we're going to give the audience a chance. Yes, that's exactly what we're doing, Michael. Yep. So you and I and our guests and whatnot, we'll be, we're going to be doing commentary while the, the, the panel or while the guests, uh, they can be watching us. They can follow along with us on Tubi. Uh, it, it's, it's a really, it's a fun ride. Um, uh, this will be, uh, we're doing it again this, um, on Friday, Friday, April 12th. Uh, we're going to be having Joe Lujan come in with some cast members of his movie. And the movie we're going to be watching will be Rust 3, Rust 3. Uh, Joe, Joe, uh, uh mentioned that he is in the process now, of uh, uh, basically wrapping up the entire storylines for his multiverse story. So he is making the last movies for certain characters and then that'll be it for them. And uh, I do believe for Billy and Rust, I think it's gonna be Rust 3. Oh, you gotta watch you gotta you gotta watch it, Mayan. We're just talking we're just talking about it. We we're already gonna have already watched it. So we're gonna be deep diving. So there will be spoilers. So you want to watch the movie beforehand so you can come in there and and throw in some questions like like you can ask me you can ask me like uh uh in consecration will there be any mazers and i can sit there and tell you no 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 mazers in consecration um <laughs> i'm in the boneyard oh yeah <laughs> Yes, she had the she had the best scene. She had the best death scene of the year, according to the Oscars. 
I love Karen. Karen Karen's a joy. Um Sunday night, Sunday night, we will be watching, uh, we will be um not watching, but we will be talking about consecration. Um this is a movie that we're gonna be talking with uh uh this Sunday. We're already gonna watch it and then we're just gonna break it down. Um the movie that we're talking about, uh, as far as uh, as far as interaction goes, will be uh, April twelfth with Joe Lujan, and then in May uh, we're gonna get the we're gonna get the date nailed down soon, uh, and that will be Michael Menard, the gentleman right behind, right right underneath you there. He it'll be his movie that we'll be talking about in May. Uh, you should have killed me, and we'll be bringing up uh, uh, we'll be bringing up uh, uh, cast members of that movie plus Michael. So we're doing that once a month. Uh, we're bringing in a, a, a watch party with directors, producers, and actors and whatnot who we can get to talk about the movie. Um, I think, I think, in, in, in uh, uh, June. Well, I'm going to do that separately, but I am going to do a panel show. I'm going to be doing a panel show of a recurrent of River Oaks, which is a podcast audio drama. I will be doing that separately, but it's going to be sort of like the same thing. We have we have all sorts of we have all sorts of fun things. Yes, no doubt, right? I, I was so happy that she got I I was I just tickled me. It tickled me that and and um you know it, you know if you go back and listen to the interview, Karen mentions how that show happened. Uh I mentioned how uh, uh, uh Eli Roth, it was just her. Eli Roth and two other cast members are uh, crew members, and they filmed that during the day. And it was no stunt double. That was no stunt double. She did all that stunt work herself. But Karen's a badass. Karen is a badass. Let me make, make no mistake about that. She, her background is in action. Um, uh, she she did uh, Mutant X. She did uh, Young Blades. She did Adventures Inc. with Michael Biehn. And she did uh, Flash Gordon, so she she could do that. She could do that kind of work. Yes, definitely. I'm I am waiting for those. Oh no, Dragon! Wait till you go see it, man. Wait till you see it. You'll love it. You'll love it. They put together a strong cast. Uh, Eli Roth made a really fun movie. He made a really fun movie, and it set records. It set records uh, as far as Thanksgiving, uh, Thanksgiving horror movies. It's the best. It's the. I think it made the most movie. It made the most money of any horror films and so far uh, in in um, in uh, uh, November. Oh, let me drop some. Let me drop some links off here. I can do that. I'm just sitting here acting goofy. Let's see. Ah, come on. Oh, why can't I go to his channel? There we go. Huh. Oh, this is your personal page, Michael. I've, oh, I didn't do that. I was looking for the. I was looking for the. Uh, I was looking for the multiverse page. But I can drop that in here. I'll drop that in here. So yeah, help help Michael build up his page a little bit here. Uh, help him build up his page. And uh, yeah, I'm sorry. Yeah, I can do that. Yeah, I'm gonna put down your I'm gonna put down your personal page too, Michael, so people can uh, find you there uh, find you there as well. Yeah, let's get you let's get you a few heads over there. So that's Michael's personal page. And let me go ahead and grab uh, a red arc. Uh, is it better than Amityville Turkey Day? Shit. Yeah. Shit. <laughs> oh.
Okay. All right, and here is the business page uh, right here for Michael's pay for Michael. Uh, let's see, he's got two seventy nine. Oh man, we can get a few heads in here. Let me let me drop this down in the chat. Let's get let's get Mikey up to uh, a few heads over here. Red Arc Red Arc Entertainment. There you go. All right. Yeah, by all means, uh, uh, Metaverse is uh is Damon and the crew, but Red Arc is his main page. So yeah, drop on uh drop on Michael's uh two pages there. Um. I'll drop media verse as well, Michael. Let's see, uh, let's see if I can grab that right now. Yeah, let's do that. Make that pop. Make that happen. All right. Okay, these guys should could use a little love too. Let's get that going. So let me drop this here. This is for Mediaverse right here. So if you have not subbed to this channel, uh, go ahead and do that as well. And they will be returning the favor. Remember when you do, uh, when you do, oops, I made a mistake there. Hold on. Okay. Uh, okay. All right. Here we go. Right here. Um, well, don't forget if you go over there and you subscribe to people uh, to leave a comment down below. There we go. And I'm leading you guys into uh, I'm leading you guys into uh, uh, videos, not the main page. Uh, so when you do land on the video, watch it and then drop a comment. That that helps. And uh yeah, let's let's uh let's do this. Uh is Echo, are you still here? Echo, Echo, are you still here? Okay, I'm gonna go drop some uh I have not done this in a while. <laughs> All right. All right. My, uh, our good friend Dragon has came back. So he is here. Oh, okay. Um <laughs> damn man. She just you just crushed him. <laughs> damn, that's rough. Go ahead, go ahead and take your shower, Echo. We'll we'll probably still be here when you get back. Uh, all right. Uh, okay, so there's some there's some links right there. Uh, let me go ahead and drop May Ann's link here. We got to do that. That would be I would be remiss if I did did not do that. Okay. What the hell? Man, opening a package from my chunky Jordy. Seventeen hours. Oh, really? Oh, this guy got a, he got unpackaging before I did. Oh, ain't that some bullshit? <laughs> ain't that some shit? All right, so now you guys can go over there and check out what uh, Mayan got. I don't know what she got. <laughs> Oh, uh, uh huh. I I bet. So you can guys go go over and see what uh, uh see what May Ann's friend sent her seventeen hours ago. Um, oh God, we already got it, Michael. We got snowed on. Uh, we got snow Friday. Um, man, we got snow Friday. 
Uh, it's been bitterly cold for the last four days. Uh, it's snow is the snow's almost gone, but we think it's still gonna. They're still saying it's gonna. Uh, um, it might warm up and it might not. They're not really sure. They could make you know, laughing her ass off at me. It takes years to open pack. It didn't take you years to open hers. <laughs> Thank you so much. I appreciate the snow. Truly, snow is fun. Okay, and I need to drop in uh, our friend, other friend. I did not drop his page on here, and that would be remiss of me. Let's go drop a brother of a certain ages page. Let's go to their, his channel. And, uh, yeah, oh, man, only three, three from 300? Oh, we can make that happen. We can make that happen. Um, let's see. What should we drop? What should we drop? I'm going to drop something. Let's drop a video. I need to drop something. Okay. Oh, that's interesting. So he, there's a video here. I'm going to drop this one here because I'm probably going to go. I'm probably going to look at that one myself. Uh, I'm going to add to, to watch later. And then how do you humanize a troll? That's a good topic. Okay, let's drop that one in. All right, so here's a, 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 a here's one from brother from a certain age. Here's his uh here's his channel right here. I dropped the video here. So if you guys have not subbed to him, please do so. He's only three away from three hundred. So that would be cool if we can get him up to three hundred before the end of the stream. Uh, let's see. Uh, oh my gosh, man, we we have missed it too. Man, we have we have missed it too, uh, Michael. We barely got any snow at all. I mean, at all. We don't know what that means. We don't know if we're gonna get a. a we're gonna, we're gonna. We don't know if we're gonna get a, a a a wet summer or a dry summer. Last summer wasn't that bad, but this year I don't know, man. I, I'm, it makes me nervous because this is. I've been here. I've been in Michigan now for. Uh, this is my 25th year, and this by far, and I do mean by far, has been the easiest winter of all. All right. Is there anybody's page who I have not dropped that's still in the chat? Eric, you can if you're still here, you can drop your channel. And Casey can drop his, and Echo can drop his as well. I have not done a late stream like this in, in a very long time. Not not this late. It's been a long time. All right, there we go. That's what I'm talking about. Ah. Uh, so this week, uh, I guess I should mention the week because I don't know who, how many people are here and not heard it or not. So, um, so Tuesday we are talking to Sin from Sin's Corner. She'll be here Tuesday at eight o'clock. Uh, let's see, has anybody messed with? Ver I have not tried that. The vertical streaming, I ha I have not tried that. Um. Yeah, I know. I know that. Uh, I know what this vertical streaming uh has it allows people to spot them streaming if you if you scan shorts. If you scan shorts, you you'll run across people who are live streaming. I I don't know what the I don't know what the benefit of that is. Um. So we got Sin from Sin's Corner Tuesday at eight o'clock. Wednesday, we have uh, actress Carrie Goodwin will be here with us at 8 o'clock. Uh, and then uh, Thursday, uh, we have actress Greta Volkova will be here with us at 8 o'clock as well. Uh, so, and that will be uh, Women in Entertainment Month will come to an end. Um, of course, on the 31st, a week from today, uh, we'll be here on my channel and we will be talking about consecration. 
And then April 2nd, April 2nd, we have composer Sean Murray will be here with us. Uh, and he has done absolutely everything. Sean Murray, that's, that's going to be a big show for us. Uh, that's definitely one of the more upper level uh, uh, as far as celebrities go that we've had on the show. Um, Sean Murray has had a, a tremendous success and a very much sought after composer for action adventure movies, uh, westerns and whatnot. Super, super, uh, and horror movies as well. He did the score for uh, Night of the Caregiver. He did the score for uh, 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 the Brio Bravo franchise. He's done a ton of scores for uh, director Jesse Johnson, uh, my Scott Action movies, uh, action movies. Uh, he's done a ton of, of scores for that. And um, yeah, we're going to be talking to him on the 2nd of April. Uh, on the 3rd of April, we're talking to Larry, the cat dad, the horror cat dad. And then on the 4th of April, we'll be talking with actress and model uh, Chanel Ryan will be here with us. So we are going to have a lot of fun. Let's see. Uh, oh, what stream? Uh, what what uh what what uh what of uh, what was what, what live stream were you on, Mayan? Um, yeah, I don't really don't do too much about shorts. Shorts are I don't really mess what mess with them. Um, they really never really done anything for me at all. Uh, I know some people say they get a lot of they get a lot of subs, but they don't get any interaction from them. They people just sub to it. But that's it. They don't come to live streams. They don't leave comments. They don't do anything. And then what happens is that YouTube will come around and clean your clean your page. And next thing you know, you're losing. I lost thirty. I lost thirty eight subs a couple of months ago. Uh, YouTube came in and took thirty eight away from me. And uh, I, I do believe they're all tied to the to, all tied to the to the shorts. Okay, and he has a patch over his eye, and people were were being were being trolls. That sucks. That sucks. I think Jim is going through that right now, man. Uh, now it's dark. I think that's one of the reasons why he's losing his subs right now too. Is I think he does a lot of shorts, but um, and he probably gets a lot of subs out of it. But YouTube has come come in behind and has taken all those all those subs out because they're not interacting with this page. They don't comment. They don't do anything. So that, that's that's part of that's part of YouTube. Oh yeah, yeah. That's why when we mentioned this sub, when you sub to somebody else's page, you have to watch a video of more than five minutes. You have to leave a a, a meaningful comment because if you don't do it, even even with shorts, YouTube will come by and they will take you out. They'll they'll empty out your account. Yeah. Yeah, I got knocked down thirty eight. It just took it just took me all this time just to get it back, just to get it back. I was at thirteen twenty something. I got knocked down uh, underneath thirteen thirty eight, and I've just now re recaptured those. So yeah, it, it sucks. Well, I didn't think this was going to go anywhere tonight. I thought I thought I thought I'd be talking to the wall tonight. So I'm so glad you guys all came out and hung out. Um, I'm putting together a, a video. Ooh. So I started a new series on my channel called uh, uh revisiting the review and uh what it is i'm going back to the to the movies I, I reviewed on my blog i had a blog called the inner circle and i'm going back to those reviews that i did i did those reviews way before i joined youtube and i'm going back to those movies and re-watching them and doing video reviews of them seeing how they held up so that's what i was doing tonight and uh so tonight we watched uh into temptation so this was the very this was the sixth interview i ever did this is the sixth one i ever did and um i'm so happy to say that it held up <laughs> yeah
Yeah, I don't know what it I don't know what it is um with the shorts. I mean, I I put out a lot of shorts out with Paladin, you know, cuz cat videos are, you know, you know, they're super popular. But man, I don't I don't really don't get any I don't get any traction from it. Yeah, I don't know how it works. Uh, let's see. Uh, let's see, he deleted 75 shorts because I was just using them to, to document me completing the 75 hard program. Those shorts have nothing to do with the overall theme of my channel. Wow. Yeah, Paladin sleeping. He's uh, downstairs uh, sleeping on his blanket on the couch. That's that's crazy. I, I I just don't do I just I just don't do very many shorts at all. I, I try, I think about it, you know, I go out there, drop and do a minute video of, of him and I put him up there, but it really doesn't seem to be helping me very much. I mean, you go to my short page and it's all all double digits. I think I had one that just hit a hundred. Uh, but it's been up there for a while. <laughs> it just now hit 100. So shorts, shorts don't really do much for me. Um, I guess I have to learn how to use the clip. That's one thing I'm gonna have to. I'm gonna have to experiment on that. Is uh, learn how to cut and and clip and make shorts. Because I, I, I just want to make sure I can do that without messing anything up. I don't want to lose any, you know, I don't want to lose any interviews that way. Uh, did I dive into the dark side of the ring? Uh, wrestling documentaries? No, but I do know that Eric, hey, Internet, it's Eric. I know that he is big into wrestling, big. If you connected with this channel, if you connect with this channel or connect with him on Instagram, he he would definitely be the man to talk to. Yeah, he loves he loves wrestling. He's had some uh, he's had some pro wrestlers on the show as well. Uh, shorts get great penetration for a while, but like too many creators making videos now to get in, now to get any easy videos. Uh, let me drop his channel down. I'll drop it right now. Okay. Okay. Let me see. Uh, oh, yeah, let me do that. Yeah, let's do that. So I'm going to send you a link that he did with uh, with a pro wrestler. He did uh, he did this video right here with uh, uh, Gavin Alexander. So let me drop that down. Yeah, Eric, Eric is a Eric's a big he's a big wrestling guy. All right. Yeah, man, drop him a follow for sure. He'll get you back. Yes, I will definitely talk to you tomorrow uh, 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 on Instant this week. Uh, you know, just let me know. Let me know, you know, what your schedule's like or whatnot. And, you know, because you got to get a chance to relax and unpack and everything. So it's not, not going to happen tomorrow. But we'll definitely, uh, you know, We'll, we'll wait till you get all situated where you're where you're totally comfortable, and then we'll definitely do a date. That's a that's a promise. I'm so glad I'm glad you're back, man. I'm glad you're back. That's that's exciting news, because I because I I really did want I do want to do some collaborations with you. Yep, I'm 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 about I'm about collaboration. 
Uh, I do know that, uh, like I said, I do know that our friend James from the Friendly Men, I know he's flying over our heads right now, uh, but the Friendly Men will be back in action before too much longer, too. So that'll be really good. Uh, that'll be really good. In fact, they'll be here with us on the 20th of April, right, and we're interviewing a new band from Canada, a new to us anyway, um, called Jaded Truth, and we'll be talking to them on the 20th. So we have a lot of we have a lot of fun coming up here on the channel. Still looking. I'm gonna have to. I'm gonna have to. Worry, I'm gonna have to watch your video down there. Yeah. Your unboxing video. <laughs> that's, that's funny. Now that's the shit between that between that and Damon uh, uh between that and Damon over at uh, uh, uh that's just killing me. Holy cow, Mike Markoff looking pretty fierce here. Got a new headshot going on here. Holy shit. He's gonna be uh he'll be on he'll be on this summer, uh he'll be on this summer uh with Hitman. Uh Glenn Powell's new movie is coming out on Netflix, and Michael will be part of that. Let's see. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna save that. Okay, let me shut this down. All right. All right. All right, guys. Um. Uh, to go ahead and shut this down down uh i want to thank you guys for coming out and hanging out with us uh i'll probably hear from bones later that i stole his name i did it i stole it i, don't, I have no apologies for it boneyard ballas y'all that's right uh, uh, uh that's right that's what we call boutique label uh if you buy boutique uh uh, uh if you buy them secondhand if you buy them if you buy boutique labels uh movies secondhand you can be part of the Boneyard Ballas. That's right. <laughs> all right, you guys. Have a great night, and we will talk all at you soon. Um, have a great night. Peace.